We're making El Pastor tacos and the boys and I are so excited, we're almost peeing ourselves. We are so excited about today. So excited. The little glimpse that you just got in that open is not gonna come close to how great this is gonna taste. Now look, there's a few ways to do this al pastor thing. You've probably seen them if you've been to Mexico. Think of it, it's, it's, it's layers of deeply marinated, super flavorful pork on the big rotisserie spit thing. It's kind of like the shawarma deal, right? They shave off the sides, it rotates. There's the rotisserie in the back, it cooks. So there's all kinds of ways you can do it. You can marinate the pork, you can throw it on the grill, you can do it in the oven. But I found a thing online that will let us cook it as close to that as possible without the rotisserie deal and the heat in the back on the pit barrel cooker that we have and it's gonna be insane, insane. Here's the order. We make the marinade, we put it with the pork. We get it on the thing. We make a little tomatillo salsa deal. We make our own corn tortillas. The pork comes off, we cut it, it goes in. Oh my God, I can't wait. I just like to skip to the eating part if I could. Well, you can, but don't, because you can actually do this. This is within the grasp of doability. It really is. I don't think that's a saying. Doability is not a saying. The grasp of doability. Within the grasp of doability. I see it on a shirt. I believe it should be proper English if it's not. All right, marinade, and then uh, we carry on. I'm an adult, I hope that's obvious. I used to love soda as a kid, and I stopped uh, drinking it for one reason. Most of it is absolute shit. Oh, can I say that? The USDA dietary guidelines say you should have a maximum of 50 grams of sugar. One can of soda can wipe out pretty much a whole day's worth. Calories, regular soda, about 140. That's a lot. Average soda, fiber, goose egg, none, zero. All that changes right now with Olipop. Check this out. Not 40 grams of sugar, two grams of sugar. Not 140 calories, but 35 calories. And not zero fiber, nine grams of fiber. And that's a third of what you should have for the whole day in one delicious can. The flavors they have are reminiscent of things that you would have in your childhood. These are flavors like cherry vanilla, orange squeeze, vintage cola, Classic root beer. Oh yes, the list goes on. My favorite, orange squeeze. Wait, it's like cream soda without the sugar. And how about this, prebiotics, botanicals, and plant fiber. That comes down to one thing, that this is also good for your gut. Take care of your gut, but take care of your gut while you're having something that makes you feel, I mean, a little guilty, like you shouldn't, but it's so good you don't want to stop. This makes me want to pour this into a tall glass with vanilla ice cream. Take me back to my youth. And a small but very important point, their website is actually really easy to navigate. You'll be very happy. Cut the sugar, cut the heavy carbs, add some fiber, add the prebiotics, do this. Click my link below to get 15% 15% off Olipop's best-selling variety pack. That includes all six flavors, and you'll be doing this and feeling so good about yourself doing it. Okay, so again, click the link in the description to get 15% off Olipop's best-selling variety pack. Includes all six flavors. Thank you, Olipop, for sponsoring this video. These are dried peppers. Now look, before you say, Sam, you're in San Diego, of course you can get dried Mexican peppers like this. I've already checked, you can get them online. Little thing called Amazon, perhaps you've heard of it. These are dried guajillo peppers. These are dried ancho uh, peppers. Also, uh, poblano pasillas. We use them all the time, they're green. And when they dry and shrivel, this is what you end up with. So we have to rehydrate them and it goes like this. Listen, there's seeds in here we don't want. So I just do this, I cut the top off, cut them in half, and then just dump out the seeds that are in here. You can open them up, get this part out. See how the seeds are like crazy, there's so much. Just do all the rest of these and then come see me at the end when you finish your work. Look, if there's a few seeds, no big deal. Nobody's gonna die, you're gonna be fine. And by the way, it's just an expression. If somebody dies from eating this and it has nothing to do with this, but you wanna sue me, you can't because I've said you can't. All right, next up is we're gonna take these guys. We need to cover them with some very hot water. So I'm just gonna use the blender thing that we're gonna mix everything in. And they go like that. And then I've got some water that was just boiled. I'll throw it on top. Push these guys down a bit. Get down there, get down there. Put the lid on. I'll leave that for 15 minutes. While it's rehydrating, we can cut the pork. 
All right, what you got here is your basic everyday boneless pork shoulder that is going to become our amazing pastor. And we wanna cut this into fairly thin-ish pieces, not paper thin, but if, what is this? Was this like a- Centimeter? Uh, no, oh. what is this, quarter of an inch? I'm not good at space and scale. Mm. You know what I'm really bad at? What? How many people are in a crowd? <laughs> like the, co the cops are good at that. 50,000 people, I'm like, how do they know? <laughs> so we're just gonna cut this fairly thin, maybe one eighth, and that's okay. So we go like this. I've trimmed some of the fat from this, but a little bit of fat is gonna be flavor, boys, so we're just gonna leave it. So just cut your way through this and take your time. This is the same cut of meat that you would use if you were uh, making pulled pork. All right, so here's what we've got. We've got this like this. There's really nothing to do till our peppers are ready, so we'll do this and then they will be. We can finish off the marinade now because these chilies are now softened. You can see this, like this, nice, right? They're not hard anymore. So let's just get rid of the water. We don't need that. We'll pour that off. Now everything else can go in for us to whiz up. We're gonna put in a small hand pile of garlic, as Max would say. When he was a little kid, instead of handful, he'd call it a hand pile. So that was about uh, five cloves. They were kind of broken, so it looks like more, but that's fine. About a half of a yellow onion, just rough chopped. Thank you. Half a cup each of orange juice and pineapple juice and a tablespoon of cumin, a tablespoon of oregano, a tablespoon of smoked paprika, about a tablespoon of kosher salt and pepper, and last but not least, a, a few tablespoons of achiote paste that looks like this. It's like, uh, it's like Play-Doh. You remember Play-Doh? Do you remember Play-Doh? Yeah, of course. Okay, good. I didn't know if it's, if millennials didn't have it when they were little kids. This will help give the, uh, the pastor its distinctive red color. If you can open it, we were talking about those clamshell things the other day that products come in that are impossible to open. So like three tablespoons like this, I'll break it in half and they'll go like that. We'll throw the lid on and fingers crossed. Wait, where's that part? That's gonna be very important. Let's give it a go. And let it get fairly smooth. Should we have a look? That, this is what you want. Thick and rich and amazing. Oh, the smell, ah, the smell. Now that the marinade's ready, we can marinate the pork. So in it goes, beautiful. Lay it down. Now comes this part. So over the top we go. Oh, Max, you're not gonna like what's coming up. Your hands? My hands. I'm sorry, but you can see it's important to get the marinade in between the slices. You would get that, right? I know you understand this concept. I know you don't like this concept, and it's gonna be a bit of a mess here. So, so just separate and marinate. <laughs> there you go. It's a t-shirt. Separate and marinate. You want everybody covered nicely. Separate and marinate. It's within the grasps of doability. It is within the grasp of doability. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? Everybody knows it. Well, I can tell you this. All my planning for size has gone out the window, and we'll deal with it when we skewer. But until then, just get everything covered beautifully. And I do have a bit of a skewer challenge coming up. And I don't mean like I'm going to make you guys do some stuff. I just mean because of how I want to cook this, I've made my life just a tiny bit more difficult than it needs to be. But that's all right. This wouldn't be Sam the Cooking Guy if there weren't challenges, correct? Right. All right. Look, we can see the tool above your head. There it is. That's what we're using. We're going to try and make that thing work. Okay, so just whip your way through this until everybody's done. And now it requires two hands. I love this. What sound is this, boys? <laughs> could it be a walk sound? It could be. I was going to say it's the sound of marinating pork slices, Chance. But if you have to take it to that level, then that's fine. Chance, he knows it as a WAP. <laughs> it's how it's spelled. No, it doesn't make sense to me that it would be WAP. <laughs> I don't know, why didn't you do it in something bigger so you could just move it all around? I like this, leave me alone. All right, one last little goosh of marinade on top. A little bit more of this. I take this inside, I cover it, I put it in the fridge, and we're going four hours up to overnight. You good? Good. I come back. We move on to the next thing. All right, the requisite amount of time has passed, and now we're gonna build. But we're gonna start with some pineapple on the bottom. Pineapple will go on the top, but I want some on the bottom too. So I'm just gonna cut this guy off and sort of a decent sized base here. Now, this has to go here. I have an idea, watch. For just the pineapple on the base, I'm gonna do this. I like experimenting. 
And this is what we're doing, lads. Now this goes back on here. You know what this is called? Jerry rigging. Okay, how's that? I think I like this. Here's our meat. Marinated, lovely, gorgeous. Okay, this is gonna be messy. This is not gonna be pretty at all. Here's what I have to do. As I said, normally you would be skewering on an actual skewer top, a pointy top like this. But because of the way I wanna do this, I don't have that luxury. So I'm gonna have to take a piece of meat. Max says it's gonna be simple and go like this, poke a hole and get it down. Oh God, that was way too hard. It's, no, it just takes longer. Call the fire department. You're such a schmuck. Wait, why would you call the fire department? Because you're freaking out. All right, you get what's happening here. This has to be built a little bit at a time. It's all going to be good. Everybody's what's going on inside. Cry while you do it. You fighting in there with somebody, Beth? Now see, a piece like this with a natural hole is obviously easy. It's not going anywhere. The weight is going to keep everything in check, OK? Everything. So this is going to take me a little bit of time. So Max, do something. Play some pretty music. Work your artistic magic and just let this happen. Swag. Right, so I'm pretty happy with this. I'm gonna trim up a couple of these pieces on the bottom just because I don't really like the way that they're sort of hanging over the edge. Good. And look at that, I'm so happy with this little guy. All right, time for another piece of pineapple on top. See if I can do this. I made a hole. Okay, I don't wanna... I don't want to, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, would my method uh, have worked? Uh-oh, uh, it might have to. All right, stand by, here's what we have to do. My idea. No, it's a good idea. I just, I didn't want it loose, you know? Watch your fingers. I got it. It's... <sighs> there you go. Nope, it's not going in. I just really want this to sit nice on top. Wait for it. I've got more pineapple if I have to. All right, uh, you know what we're doing now? We're putting it on the pit barrel cooker. And in we go. Oh, this is gonna be glorious. Don't burn me. Perfect, seated beautifully, waiting for El Pastor excellence. One thing first though, you know what it is? It's the lid. Now boys, I say we make some uh, tomatillo salsa. We've done it before. I use uh, jalapenos and serranos. I didn't want too much heat in this, so we're just gonna use the jalapenos. So look what I've got right here. We start with tomatillos. I've got about a pound here. Uh, they come with a husk on them, like a paper stuff. You pull that off, you rinse them with cold water because they're sticky underneath. And now here they are, they're like this. A couple jalapenos, uh, half of a yellow onion, and uh, four big cloves of garlic, paper on. I'm just gonna give a couple dots of oil to the tomatillos, the jalapenos, tiny bit on the onion, and that's it. Leave the garlic like this. This now will go in the oven under the broiler about that far away, about two to three minutes till it starts to brown, flip everything over, do it again, bring it back, and you'll see what's next. Remember these guys? They're back. Squishy, everything, great. I mean, the onion's not squishy, but it's been lightly roasted and it's perfect. I love these things. Okay, so everything goes in. Tomatillos first. Nice. The jalapenos. I pulled the stem off. This is fine. It'll grind up. Beautiful. The onion. And then the uh, garlic. And the garlic will just squeeze out of its little paper. And now this little butt end is, I mean, that's fine. But now look at it. It's soft and supple and great. So I'll just throw these guys in. And now you know what we do? We mix. So here, I'll, I'll put this up here for you guys, okay? Everybody like that? Yeah. You can see where it is, it's all good. I should put the lid on top or I'll be very sorry. Contact. Contact. Here we go. Oh, let's see what we've done here. So the question is, how chunky do you like it? That would be your place to answer, boys. Pretty chunky. Is this good? Yeah, I like the way that looks. I like the way it smells. I want some cilantro in there. So we'll just take about a half of a head, drop it in, give it one more little blast of spinach. Not S-P-I-N-A-C-H, S-P-I-N-N-A-G-E, like this. Let me stop, nice. Now that's what this should look like. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Little taste? Yep. Little taste. Oh man, you're only getting a little bit. Wow, that's good. Sometimes you get a super hot jalapeno, but it is delicious. Just gonna give it a little bit. Oh man, is this gonna be good. All right, shall we make some, uh, oh, I don't know, corn tortillas? Yeah. yeah. Let's give it a go. All right, it's time to make corn tortillas. We've done this before. 
I'll give you a quick overview of it. This is a big bowl. This is two cups of masa harina. That is ground corn. In it goes. All right, teaspoon of salt, like that. And now we want to add between a cup and a half and two cups of warm water. I'll start with about a cup and a half, like this. You can always add the rest. And then we'll start by mixing, not with my hands, Max, but with a large thing. What is this called? A rubber scraper? A big, no, a big spatula. Now I can see this is still pretty dry. We're going to switch to our hands in a second, though. Let me just put a little bit more water in here. I'm going to just continue to knead in here. This is looking just about right. You want it so that when you, you can see. There's that Play-Doh thing again, sort of, right? So here's what we do. We take this. I'm going to now make a big bowl out of this. All right, let me get some saran. Take our bowl. We'll put it right here. And we'll cover it up. We'll seal it up like this. This I will now keep inside. It's a tiny bit warmer than it is here. It's starting to get cold out for half an hour. And then we come back, we make our tortillas. And after half an hour, that's what you got. You got a ball of dough for our corn tortillas. We'll unwrap our little friend and we're gonna cut them into 16. I need eight. I've got two, I've got four, I've got six, I've got eight. Next, it's very simple. You take one of the pieces, you make it into a little round ball. We're gonna use a tortilla press. So I've got a Ziploc bag that I've cut up, put it down on the bottom, the ball goes on top, the other piece of the bag on top of that, and we press. And what comes out is a corn tortilla uncooked, goes on the flat top, about a minute and a half or so aside, and voila. So you're making tortillas, they're coming out perfect. Now it's time for the pork, let's have a look. And we believe it's time. Well, let's just make sure we think it's time. And let's bring this kid out. Come on, buddy. You, my young friend, are all mine. Holy snap. Pineapple stayed. It stayed. All right, let's get it over and do something with it. So now here's what the plan is. The plan is we cut some off. Oh, my God. It is so tender and juicy. It's kind of ridiculous. Oh my God. Okay, so look, we got enough right here. All right, so we pick this up. This is gonna go in our tortilla. We'll go like this. Oh, juicy. This, this smell right here, kind of insane. And then look, then you do whatever you want with it. And a, I like a, just a little bit of this tomatillo salsa. Just a little bit. I also like the bite of a little white onion diced up. And of course, just a tiny bit of cilantro on top. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be ridiculous, stupid, crazy, mental, off the charts, over the hill. That doesn't make sense. But it will also be in my mouth in about four seconds. That's for me. And I forgot the pineapple. Stand by. It's right here. Every time, every time I forget something, you just need a couple pieces. Not a lot. Right here. How's this, Maxi? Look at, and see, you want the pineapple. It's been in there smoking away. That's gonna add the sweetness that will balance everything. How could I have forgotten this? Because I'm an idiot. Now we bite. One solid, beautiful. Smoky. Mm. Oh my God. What did I say in the beginning? Deeply flavored, rich, crazy delicious. Look, if you don't have a pit barrel smoker, if you don't have a smoker, if you don't have a grill, throw it in the oven. It's probably uh, 350 for an hour and a half, couple hours. Oh crap, oh crap. Okay, at the risk of me not stopping, I'll say thanks for being here. One of the greatest things. I'm back in Mexico again, except I did the work. So that's okay, do the work. You'll be glad you did. See ya. Go to a shop, stcg.com for stuff, good stuff. Look, we're done giving away the, uh, the garlic presses. But what we haven't started yet that we've done the past two years, we give away a bunch of stuff for the holidays, including things like an Evo. We gave away a Traeger smoker last year. We gave $5,000. Thank you, uh, QP USA. You want to be in on this and you want to be a subscriber because that's the only way that you can win.